Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Well, this is for all of you out there. Everyone listening today. If you don't know, well now you know. In a world that is consumed with so many breaking news and headline news coming at you from all different areas. This is right now with Matthew Newton, making sure that we apply a biblical approach and a Christian perspective to headline news. So here is what is happening in your world right now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, boys and girls of all ages, colors, shapes, and sizes, I haven't been with you in a while, but guess what, baby? I am back. I'm back. I've been out last week, and I'm coming back this week strong. So I want to talk to us about... This strike business, man, I don't know about you, but I've been hearing a lot about strike this and strike that. And I've been hearing a lot about indictment here and indictment there. I feel like Oprah Winfrey on the show. You get an indictment and you get an indictment and you get a strike and you get a strike. Everybody gets an indictment. Everybody gets a strike. So here we are. Let's talk about Let's talk about this UAW strike. You're saying, what in the world is the UAW and why does it matter to me? The UAW strike, it stands for United Auto Workers. So the United Auto Workers has been striking for quite some time. You've probably also heard about the strike that is happening with the writer's strike. And it seems like Hollywood might be getting their act together. They might be trying to come up with some collaborative unification. And I don't really care. (laughs) I mean, let's be honest. Like, if the writer strike in Hollywood, how does, it, how does it affect a Christian? Well, is there less filth out there? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> is there less uh, junk out there that I have to keep my kids from and keep my family from? And, oh, well, that, that sounds like a good thing to me. And you might be thinking, well, man, there's people that have lost their jobs and, and, and we, need a, the, we need the riders to help do this. Man, for real? Like, uh, I mean, the riders, Hollywood riders, man, whatever. <laughs> but the UAW auto workers, man, that kind of, uh, that kind of hits home, right? I don't know about you, but in Western civilization, in the American economy, in the North American economy, you and I, without a vehicle, without a car, without transportation, we are stuck. We are stuck. And so the United Auto Workers has been striking for uh, several days now. Uh, And these are major players. We are looking at parts of 20 different uh plants 20 different uh, assembly plants and parts and plants that produce parts for big players we're talking about gm and ford are a part of this uaw that are part of the united auto workers we're talking about we've had three plants that have completely shut down one in missouri another one in uh Michigan, and I think another one in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure about the third one. But we're talking about three plants that have completely shut down, and now we have 20 parts uh, or 20 plants that have been affected by striking and people saying, I'm done. And, and, and you're wondering, man, why are they striking? What, what is, what's happening? What do they need from me so we can get them back to work? Well, let's go back in time. Everybody go on your time machine with me. We're back in time. 
And if you remember in 2008, when we had the financial crisis in 2008, the federal government came in and set up to make sure that uh, these companies, which were too big to fail, these companies, they got set up and backed up by uh, federal government. So GM and Ford, who were just taking a massive hit, got set up. Well, uh, got got propped up, you know, by a federal government, and and how this affects us now is in 2008, a lot of those companies they lost in their in their employees, they lost pensions, they lost a certain amount of increase in their pay. Uh, new employees started off at a lower level. And here we are some 14, 15 years later, and these strikers are essentially asking for what they have lost. Now, I'm not here to pick a side. I'm not here to, to pick a right or a left side. But these strikers are simply uh, seemingly asking for what they have lost, the pension that they have lost, the employment benefits that they have lost, and yes, if you read the news, they're asking for something like a 36% increase in pay. And you're like, baby Jack, give me that 36% increase in pay. Yeah, don't we all? But the, the way this affects us as North Americans, as Western Christians, is that if they don't go back to work, then it's just going to be an escalation of your parts are going to go up. Your cost of vehicles are going to go up. And um, just just a snowball domino effect of boom, 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 boom. And the next thing you know, cars are going to cost more. I mean, have you checked the price of a vehicle lately? Can you imagine that they go up even more? I mean, just a good old-fashioned truck down here in the south of Texas. Man, trucks, that's like a luxury vehicle. I mean, goodness gracious. So, Donald, I mean, uh, President Biden showed up. He showed up today to one of the plants, and he looked around. He looked around at what was going on, and guess what he said? He said, hey, man, this looks all right. He says, keep at it. He said, don't stop. Stick with it is what he said. Stick with it. And so seemingly what we have is President Biden is made a, a political decision to support the UAW. He's made a decision to support the strike, to support the, the uh, auto workers so that they can get what they lost and they can get their increase in pay. They can take care of the new employees as they come in the scene. And it makes me think of scripture when I see discord on this national level. Now, of course, we often see discord on a political spectrum. We often see discord as, you know, right against left, blue against red, the one side of the aisle against the other side of the aisle. Everything the Democrats say is the best and everything the Republicans do is the worst and vice versa. If you're a Republican, they can do no wrong. And if and the Democrats are the absolute worst. With that being said, it makes me think of Scripture. And let's go to Psalms 133. 133. Psalm says, the writer David says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing even for life forevermore. In your Christian walk and in your daily life, being a Christian, pro promoting biblical values, 
It is your responsibility to let, as a spirit-filled believer, as someone that believes that Jesus Christ was suffered, died, rose, and his spirit now lives in you, it is imperative that the fruit of the spirit live in us. And it is imperative that we be agents of unity, not tolerant, not uh, shucking any of our belief systems, not, not even forsaking our biblical values, not forsaking the truth, but be an agent of unity. Where there is somebody that wants to listen and somebody that wants to help, there can be and you can be, we can be an agent of of unity for David said the psalmist said behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and he goes on to say and if you read it in Hebrew it says hine ma tov uma naim shevet ahim gam yachad Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So be careful which side of the aisle that you support. Be careful of which position of the strike that you support. Yeah, I, I want everyone to make more money. I don't necessarily want my car to cost money or the parts to cost money or or inflation to continue to rise. Nobody wants that. We want our, our dollar and our currency to go as far as possible. But at the same time, let's don't be so quick to judge. Let's don't be so quick to support a side. And let's be careful that in everything that we do, let the love of Jesus come out from us and be an agent of unity because there really is no other greater thing that we can have is a unifying spirit. Again, I'm not saying that you should support false doctrine or blasphemies or even be intolerant of unbiblical positions, but where there is a possibility for a unifying spirit, then you and I, we have a responsibility to scripture. We have a responsibility to our Heavenly Father, we have a responsibility to our calling. And our calling is in Christ Jesus. And we have a responsibility to unity. So behold, how good and how pleasant it is for you and I, for us. And, and what to dwell together in unity. And what more do we need? What greater position that you and I can hold is to say, Hey, I'm not here to get political. I'm not here to be on one side or the other, but I'm not here to support the strike or not su to support the strike. But what I'm here to do is I'm here to hear both sides and I'm here to be an agent of unity. For with unity, if the church would unify, if we would unify in body and in spirit, if we would unify with the Holy Spirit, then we will see a great outpouring of, of God's Spirit upon people, upon His people, upon the people in the church and the people outside of the church, and we will reap a great harvest. So, here's what's happening right now. Can't wait to see you soon. Subscribe, like it, comment. We're going to go live here in a couple of days, so I can't wait to see you live. Peace.